When I was a kid growing up in the world, you know, I was taught that you know, Jesus was the Son of God, had come to the world to replace the, you know, the old covenant and the Ten Commandments with two new ones. You know, love God above all else and your neighbor as yourself. But that isn't my, my talk. <clears throat> we were taught that, you know, the Jews killed Jesus because he was too nice or something like that. We were taught that, you know, communism was bad, was evil, capitalism was good. We were taught that competition was, you know, important, the way of you know, healthy societies. And we were taught America was all about freedom and equality and, should I go on? <laughs> yada, 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 yada. And you know, in a way, life was simple. With that, for most people, and it wasn't overly complicated as one grew up to realize that most of what we were taught about the world wasn't true. And, you know, from that we could kind of pick our way along to something that was at least closer to true. Today it's really different. Today you've got like 10 million points of view and none of them are trustworthy. You read the news and you don't know who to believe. You know, it's, it's really kind of amazing to me that, you know, I have to look at every single news source I get and say, you know, who's got what to gain from this particular story? And, and it's very amazing to me. And so what I think about that is that if you are living in your head, trying to figure shit out for yourself, and dealing with all of this profound complexity, you're never going to get anywhere. I think what happens is we end up completely shutting down and just burying our head in the sand and trying to hide from life. I can't deal with it. Well, I can't deal with that. But you know, at the end of my college, when I had you know, really, I mean, three assassinations, you know, from the time I was a sophomore in high school to a senior in college, the two Kennedys and Martin Luther King. And you realize that something was really, you know, not right with the story that we were told about the world. But, you know, during that whole time period, I discovered my heart again I discovered that I could open my heart pretty much any time I wanted if I tried. Doesn't mean it was easy, but it means I could do it if I made the effort. And if I did that, if I worked at it every day, if I really focused on opening my heart to myself and to my day, you know, forgiving myself of my own, you know, limitations that day and forgiving my day for whatever limitations it presented me and really went on with the experience of trying to grow my heart and grow, you know, the creative flow in my life and not really trying to figure too much out. Just letting it teach me instead of me trying to have to impose my will on it, 
well, really, really amazing, wonderful things started to happen. And so I think really, you know, if I were gonna say anything to a young person, and all of you are younger than me, you know, I'd say really learn, train yourself to live from your heart. You know, actually this, this magnetic field in the middle of your chest is about 100,000 times stronger than the magnetic field between your ears. And magnetic fields are what absorb, you know, information, absorb energy, absorb electrons if you want, but whatever is underneath that, magnetic fields absorb and organize energy. And if we are going to have, you know, a life that is meaningful to us, if we're going to have a life that has any joy in it, that has any upside to it, a life we can invest in, a life we can, we can harvest in, you know, we have to learn to live from our heart. Because we're never going to figure this shit out. And there's that wonderful story I was taught in Catholic school when I was a kid, when I was really young, about St. Paul walking on the beach and coming up to a kid who had had a bucket and a shovel, a little, you know, a kid shovel. And he had dug a hole in the beach and he was going to the ocean and he was picking up water and he was pouring it in the hole. And St. Paul walks up and sees this going on and watches it for a bit, and then he says, kid, what are you doing? St. Paul, it turns out, was from New Jersey. <laughs> what are you doing? The kid looks up at him and says, I'm putting the ocean in the hole. St. Paul takes taken aback and says, you can't do that. Kid says, I'll put the ocean in the hole before you'll figure out in your head the meaning of the Trinity, which is what he was thinking about. And that was for me, the message in that was, don't rely on my head, rely on my heart. We, for whatever reasons, and everybody has reasons, we all have reasons why we close our hearts to ourself. Well, for, you know, I'm, I mean, there's a, there's, pick a reason, pick 10 reasons, everybody has reasons. And none of those reasons matter at all. They're just bullshit excuses to run away from pain. That's what it is. We don't want to admit to ourselves that we're a shithead sometimes, and we don't want to like make the effort to deal with it. And so we just close our hearts, make it somebody else's problem. And you know, after a few years of that, your heart gets pretty hard. And there's not much sweetness in our lives. The whole point of this experience that we're sharing and the, and the work that we do here every single day is to begin to melt the tensions around our heart and begin to open it so that whatever our circumstance in whatever form it is, we begin to engage a deeper place within ourself and evoke a greater experience of connectedness with one another and our world and a deeper sense of our own creative energy and extraordinary potential. We have to learn to live from our hearts.
learn, living from our hearts, we learn flow is the most important thing. Flow heals. Flow inside ourselves and flow among ourselves heals. Healing slowly unwraps us from all of the excuses that we have embraced or been trained to by our parents or by our, and our ancestors so that we begin to like see ourselves and see this world in a completely new way. However crazy it might be, and it's pretty crazy and probably going to get crazier, you know, we have enormous strength and beauty within ourselves if we can only connect to it and train ourselves we, and we have to train ourselves to hold that space constantly without that we're born we're constantly carpet bombed from like you know the, the first grade till we die. It's one thing after another, as Roseanne, Rosanna Dana said. Isn't that what she said? It's one thing, on, it's not one thing, it's something else. It will always be something else. There will always be another excuse for us to, you know, for our life to be miserable if that's what we want. But our presence here is informing us that our life has something else, has a choice for us that we can make. And that choice is to begin to invest attention and energy in our own hearts, to begin to make the effort to dissolve the tensions within ourselves and find a deeper experience of flow and sweetness that will change our entire chemistry, will awaken our, even our brains and allow us to experience ourself as the fine creative energy that we are and experience this world as the beauty that underlies its expression. In the early days of television, which I happen to be old enough to have been there for, there was this commercial. It was Rocky Marciano. So anyway, he was a heavyweight champion of the world. They put him in this paper bag, this freezer bag, that's like 10 feet tall, and he's like punching at it, and the, the message is, you know, this bag is tougher than Rocky Marciano who cannot punch his way out of it. Well, our lives, each of our lives is like that paper bag, and our brain is like Rocky Marciano, or actually our mind is like Rocky Marciano. It's pretty tough. Not too bright. <laughs> and it's constantly trying to punch its way, you know, through this world. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You can't punch your way out of this paper bag. But the amazing thing is, what you can do is open your hearts and float out of it. It's that simple. And floating out of that paper bag, we see that all the boxes and boundaries that we have built up in our head are nothing. And we see with complete clarity the total temporariness of all of the drama that is this world and the unbelievable vastness of, you know, the intelligence and the creative energy 
and ultimately the love that has created this place in the beginning. And seeing that with clarity, you know, our hearts and minds and our souls are nourished and we become at peace, you know, and have the capacity wherever we turn our attention to bring blessings. And how cool is that? Get to know your heart. I mean, this energy center in the middle of your chest, this energy field, get to know it. Since you may have been pushing it down for a while, it may take you a little work. I promise you one thing, it is the only work you will ever do that you will be paid more for than you put into it. Every other work you ever do, you will be paid less for than you put into it. Namaste.